Hello, I am Taylor. And I am Nicole. And this is Glitter and Cat Litter. In this episode, we talk about the behind the scenes of how we used to do my live class audio and how really, truly wonderful Taylor is at audio because it blows my mind and I don't understand it. And he just pulled apart our Lego. How dare you? <laughs> if you would like episodes early, please get a membership at glitteringcatlitter.com or on YouTube. And we hope you enjoy this episode. Taylor does this thing where he puts his in-ears in and then I say something because, you know, it's like, I can still hear you when I have my in-ears in. Not well, but I can hear you. Can you hear me? No, because you have the softest little voice. <laughs> softest little voice? Yeah. It's so soft and little. <laughs> Aww. I wore earplugs at the last concert we went to, and my um, ears felt great after. I wear earplugs at just about every concert I go to, and my ears feel pretty great after. The, All, go ahead. The uh, Usher party in Vegas, I did not wear my earplugs, and they didn't feel great after. You know, something that, that is not spoken about when it comes to like concerts and hearing and stuff is ear fatigue, which... For real. Which I know about enough because of just like general working with music a lot. And ear fatigue is a real thing. Like you. Your eyes get tired. Yeah. If you can think about that. Your like your eye, Yeah. Your eyes get tired. Your ears get tired. But your brain like stops computing stuff after a while. So you usually I notice that I can stay interested in loud concerts and stuff way longer. Than when you have when I have my earplugs in, in. yeah, because mm -hmm. if I don't have my earplugs in, well, I mean, one, that is a massively rare occasion that I don't have my earplugs. Like I think we've been to one loud event in the past, like at least five to ten years. It's probably closer to like eight to ten years that I've forgotten them, mm -hmm. and that was actually miserable. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what that was. I do remember you forgetting them once. It was a But you had really, AirPods that you put in. I don't remember what it... No, I don't... Would Maybe I have put my me. AirPods in? I think that was you. I don't remember what it was, but whatever it was, I was like, this isn't going to work. I think I had my in-ears. I think I had my old green ones, but I didn't mm -hmm. have my earplugs. For whatever reason, I had the in-ears, not the ear... Like, that, that's a weird thing that I would have had. You were performing. That would make sense. I don't remember what it was, but I remember not having them and it was really miserable. Although my my earplugs are starting to fit loose in my right ear. It has been that way for a couple of years. Since we got these. Oh, the in-ears are the ones you kept getting fixed. Yeah, the in-ears were the ones I kept getting fixed. And, okay. then they, and now they, they fit great. They're, okay. they're awesome. Um, but the earplugs, since we got the new ones, I knew that they were starting to fit a little looser. Like the right yeah. ear doesn't stay all the way in, so I have to push it in constantly. Yeah. Which is not that big of a deal, but it is kind of annoying because they, you know. So a lot of people have a hard time grasping this, and I did at first too. But earplugs, good earplugs, do not take away the sound completely. So like if you wear earplugs at a concert, it's not a bad thing, depending on the earplugs, I assume. So, okay. So if you tuned into the last episode where I explained EQ, this will be a little bit of a, you'll understand a lot more. So the frequencies, so the nicer the earplugs to some degree, the clearer they'll sound. So the less frequencies they remove. So the point of really nice earplugs is so that it sounds the exact same as without earplugs, just quieter. Mm -hmm. so our earplugs which are not like a secret we are these headphones that we wear on here which you always are like we don't need to wear them on here i'm like i know but i i like to be able to monitor the audio in here yeah i get it um i also yeah um and it justifies the purchase of them i not have to wear them it, when i do choreography when i record choreography yeah because i have to be able to hear the music and 
I like to be able to hear myself talk through the music. Yeah, these are um, ultimate ears, but they're they're like professional grade um, molded in ears, so they fit our ears only. Like mine fit my ears, hers fit her ears. Like mine are like one and a half the size of hers because just my ear is actually bigger. <laughs> I've never but, even thought about um, that. <laughs> they're not that much bigger, but they are bigger. So you like have if you glitter. Yes, I did. Gl- I did gold glitter. Taylor did glitter and I did mirrored. Yes. Which is so funny. Like you would think it would be opposite. No, I don't like the mirror. I like the glitter. I like Sparkly. the mirror. Um, anyway. But, <laughs> but any of the companies that do um, molded in-ears also do molded ear plugs. Um, but you don't, so they're, they're, they're not that expensive. They're like a couple hundred dollars. And if you go to a lot of concerts and a lot of loud stuff, it's really worth it. Also, I originally bought ones off of Amazon that were super cheap and were great. Yeah, there's tons on Amazon. There's um well, we'll link them. I'll yeah. put I'll put a link for them. The ones that we've that I've recommended and we've we've had family buy and use and, and they've liked them. Um they're like forty bucks and they sound great. And they don't look stupid. They they they're fine, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, but if you're getting the foamy guys and the foam things are the only things you've ever used, then the concert's ruined for you if you if it's that big of a deal. But also, so might be your hearing. Yeah. And to me, I would like to be able to hear when I'm old. Yeah, like when we started dating, that was one of the first things that Taylor was like, "You need to get earplugs," because he was performing a lot at the time and. We were going to nightclubs and I mean, I worked in nightclubs for years, so I was already probably destroying my hearing a little bit Um, now that I think about that. Uh, But he was like, no, you need to have earplugs. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why would I wear earplugs when I want to hear what's happening? And he had to explain that whole thing of like, it's not going to destroy the show for you. I want you to be able to hear I think your number was 45. I want you to be able to hear when you're 45 years old. Maybe it was 45. And I, I was know. like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I do know that like when my dad goes to anything that's like loud like that, he's like, nah, I'm fine. And I know that's totally like an old guy thing, but I'm, but also it's, an old guy thing. it's a generational thing. It's a generational sure. thing for sure. But it's also, he performed for however many years without him. And they didn't have in-ears then either. So he was just on a stage with a speaker. So it was loud. I can't even imagine I'm, Imagine that. being on a stage next to a drummer. I can't imagine that. I've been there. But Without earplugs every yeah, night. it's horrible. 200 plus nights a, a year. I, I can't. Like it's. I can't like even imagine that's that. That's a lot. Like that's really bad for your hearing. So it makes a lot of sense why his hearing is like not nearly as good. So like when he yeah. goes to a concert, he's like, no, it's fine. Well, because now that I think about this, I've never even correlated that like, yeah, that was really loud. Like nightclubs that I would work at, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. And people go out that often too. Like that is really loud music most of the time. Uh, Yeah. It, anything above 95 decibels, which, okay. So like a moderately loud restaurant, here's the best way that I've always learned to explain it. A moderately loud restaurant like on like a busy on a Friday night restaurant is like 65 dB. Okay. Just you going in there. Like that's the ambient level, right? A, like if you're watching a movie at home, right? Like you're like with a stereo on and whatever, like, and you're, I don't know, 20 feet away and it's like moderately loud, like loud enough for you to hear it. That's probably like 85 Really? Yeah. The the ambient sound of a restaurant is not nearly as high as you'd think it is because it's it's more like people talking. It's just a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or right. here's a better way to explain 85. So 85 dB is like decibels, dB decibels. Um is like you can still talk to someone over it, but just barely. Mm-hmm. So like you have the sounds coming in and I can talk without raising my voice just barely. Yeah. That's 85 dB. At 95 dB, you're now hurting your hearing if you're staying at that Doesn't for very long. Doesn't the watch go off at 90? It's 95. It is? Mm-hmm. The watch will go off at 95. So if you have an Apple Watch and it's newer, I don't remember what year they 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 turn this on, but you'll get notifications that say it's too loud. I and think that's it's at it's, least three ago. 
Because I that think my sense. old one that my mom has has it. Well, we're two ago, so if it's it might be three four, or four ago. Yeah, yeah. But the the newer they are, the more accurate it is, just because the microphones and and all that gets better. Um, but ninety five dB is where your hearing starts to become, or where your hearing starts to get damaged when you're in it for yeah. prolonged periods of time. Um, I don't have like a good example. I guess the best example I can think of is be somewhere where you have to raise your voice to talk yeah. to someone like the a rink. couple feet away. <laughs> that's 95 and up. Oh. A standard. I didn't even think about that. So no true. So a standard concert is 110. Like 110 is like the industry standard of how loud a concert is. And that, I think it's like 30 minutes at that. It's like a hearing, you get hearing loss from it. So being at the skating rink and having to like yell to yes. talk to someone. That's like 100 to 105. Hours That's probably like 100 or 105 dB. It's probably not great for me. No. Um, huh. If you want it to be like, if we want to go to the like high crazy end of it, 180 decibels will actually like burst your eardrum. Oh, I don't like if that. If you're next to it. Um, and that's the, I think that's the decibel level of the space shuttle taking off. <laughs> what um, do you try to keep like at church? What level? I am in the camp of I'm knowledgeable enough and I understand sound enough and DB enough to know when it feels like how, it, how like mm -hmm. I can, if I cannot talk over it, we're good. If I can talk over it, we're bad. Does that yeah. make sense? That's kind of my gauge. So I don't use the DB meters. Occasionally I will. Yeah. Only if like someone asks me to, will I? Yeah. To give them the real answer. But I, it's probably a hundred max. Okay. It's not, I don't, but also I'm not running. And that's not for an extended amount of time. It's that's, for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, But it also fluctuates per song and per thing. And I'm Oh, to go real technical, I don't run sound as like, turn it up, it's the one level, it's done until they're done, and then turn it off. It's yeah. a like, the first song, depending on how the flow of the songs are, it'll be like, if the first song is not as high energy as the next song, then I'll start lower, mm -hmm. and then I'll build in, so it'll go like, moderately loud to loud, then back to moderately loud, kind of like, imagine it like a flight. That's so, so like you take off yeah. and then you keep it somewhere and then you go cruising altitude for the one song, which is the loud. Yeah. And then you come back like you're landing. So you kind of give the like energy and yeah. that can change in the middle of the songs too. So like depending on how everything's going, it's not just like a, here's your level for the concert. See ya. Yeah. It's like a, this part of the song deserves to be very loud to exude more energy to make the room move. Mm-hmm. Because the room's not going to move if you just leave it and everybody's sitting there and you're just like, like the room doesn't move that way. Um, so That's so interesting. But, but I never also, even thought about that. Like yeah, you in that department, how you control it. It, it, it makes, when you, that's part of what a really good sound guy, sound yeah. engineer, live sound engineer is doing. Um, they're not just like, okay, the sounds are good okay, the, the reverb is on or off or, oh, the, yeah. the effects are on or off or, oh, I muted the channel that, that doesn't need to be heard for the song. Or it's not that. It's, it's yeah. a lot more the art of this part of the song is meant to be more impactful. Therefore, it should be louder. And then we can bring it back down to add more dynamics because the band is like playing one level. They can't like, yeah. when you're playing instruments, most of the time through an amp and stuff, you don't have that much control over your volume. Right. Like to yourself. And typically if you're playing live, you don't want to because then it affects everything that the sound guy and the rest of everything that's happening. So typically you need to lean on the sound guy to know what the whole like line of the show is. Yeah. But that's why you have a touring sound engineer. Like that's yeah. why that sound engineer, the one guy or the one girl is the one person, the whole entire tour. It's not a separate person. How does it, how does it feel this is opening up a bigger conversation, but like, how does it feel to know that you're very good at that? To know that you are very good at that. It feels like second nature. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really feel like. It's a weird thing, right? Like someone complimented me. I was teaching a lesson yesterday and she 
complimented me and said, you're very good at this, at teaching. And it was like such a, a nice moment. But at the same time, it felt like she was shocked at how good I was at teaching. And it was like, yeah, I know. But it was like, it was like, obviously, thank you. Like, I'm very grateful that you feel that way. And yes, but also I, I know that. So like, it's a weird balance of being like, yeah, I'm really good at this thing, but also very humble about it of like being very appreciative when people notice it. I, well, yeah. It's a weird one because it's it goes very unnoticed. Yeah, really, the best. The, it's good when you don't notice the sound guy. Yeah, the best, the best thing that I always go off of is if no one has, if if not a single person knows that I am there. Yeah, I did my job right. Yeah, if anyone knows that I'm there, my job was done very wrong. Like for some yeah. reason, whatever that reason is, my job was wrong. There are times where it's called out to me to say something to me which is rare but it's an occasional like when thing when they want something to like when up. it's usually like something's wrong on the stage and there's not cuz if you're not on a big production there's not typically someone on the stage that you can tell without like putting the sound guy on blast yeah right but like when you're somewhere and it's like small and and the people on the stage need something they have to tell you yeah and if and if it's not coming out of the PA, then there's no there's like yeah. how am I supposed to know that that's happening? Right. You know, like the very rare occasion that say like we had house music on, but for some reason the house music is sending to their in ears. Right. Right. I don't know that because I didn't turn Only that on. That. Only they know that because they hear it. And say I turn off the house music in the house. I haven't hit pause on like the phone or the iPad or whatever that's playing the music and they're supposed to start playing and they're listening to the song while also trying to play whatever song they're supposed to be playing, which is not usually well, the same key or tempo or anything. It reminds me of like going back to when I used to teach the live classes every week. There were times when I would have music playing, like welcoming people to the room mm -hmm. on Zoom. And then I would have to pause that music, fade into me, turn me, my volume on. And then it's like, I'm hearing something that could be different from what they're hearing. Yeah, we set it up so that it's not the same. Yeah. Well, it had to be set up that it's not the same. And that was so stressful because I was like, you don't know what's going I have on. no idea what they're hearing. Right. So there were times when like I would be still talking and they're not hearing me or like they, they're not hearing the choreography music or like, yeah. There, there's so many things that can go wrong yeah. well, in a live production. The way we did your live production does not, well, yes, there's not a good way to do audio through one computer. We figured it out. We've got it yeah. to work. It is not an ideal scenario to have one computer running your whole thing. Right. Which is really annoying because it should be totally fine in one device but there's too many like loops yeah like there's too many directions sound has to go to like work appropriately to to like make it function like this is turning into just like a sound well, technical thing but i mean i can explain it though but like so Nicole's live setup, I, th I think actually some of the people would appreciate this that, that listen to our podcast, because if they were in any of the live classes, yeah. then it, this is a technical loop that goes crazy. Okay, so the way it works is we used Zoom as the main source, which is what anybody that attended the classes or live or lessons or anything now that's still yeah. online, it's all through Zoom, right? But Zoom was not actually how you were interfacing you were interfacing with obs mm -hmm. which obs is a free streaming software um that's really powerful it does really great stuff um but so until it doesn't yeah well that's just <laughs> that's also part of this right so and then but but because you have the music that you're playing especially on the choreography days the music that you were playing has to be through ableton so now we're using three softwares right because we were using Ableton because the only way to loop the song and have it play constantly repeating is through Ableton. 
Um, I mean, there's obviously other ways to do it that are more clunky. The best way and to do it was through Ableton, is through Ableton. Through Ableton, through a little, I forget what interface. it's called. But it had, we had to set it up to be a play pause and then like the beginner intermediate. Oh, the controller. Yeah. So The yeah. beginner intermediate and then the advanced. And in the beginner and that's not even part of that's that. not even part of the audio stuff that's weird. Or that's not even no. part of the like looping. That's just a controller that I had set I had MIDI mapped for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not gonna explain what MIDI is, but basically it's just a thing <laughs> that has buttons on it and and I told specific buttons to play and pause yeah. specific things on Ableton. But so the audio and now the other part that makes this really confusing for everybody that was on the receiving end of it is you're not hearing what Nicole is hearing and Nicole has to have in ears in because if she doesn't and we do her just listening to the end feed, she has a two second delay or a, I think it was like a 280 millisecond delay, uh -huh. which if you don't know what 280 milliseconds is, it's more like this. There was one it's class. It's really bad. There was one class that we had... We always tried to make it better, and there was one day that we were struggling with making it work. I forget what we were changing in the middle of that, but there was a delay, and it, unfortunately, it was a choreography day, and I was like, oh, no, I can't do this because I'm hearing five, six, seven, eight, and then I'm, I'm moving, but there's a delay in what I'm saying. It was so confusing because the counts were all off and I did it. We made it so that it, the delay was like not horrible, but there was still a delay. Yeah, I don't and I was like, that. Oh man, I really hope this turns out. So like if I ever seemed stressed in class, <laughs> there was a lot going on behind the scenes yeah. in the production. Yeah. So, okay. So the way we got it to work was, and this is so annoying that it had to be this way. We had a mixer, like real, like an actual audio mixer that had specific channels kind of going like into this. it. Yeah, well, nobody can see that. Yeah. But it just, Google it if you don't know what an audio <laughs> mixer looks like. Just look up audio console, audio mixer. Yeah. You'll see one. It'll probably look intimidating. That's fine. It um, is. But we had that and we had your microphone going into it, which was a wireless microphone. And then we had the computer audio going into it. And then we had it going out back to the computer and we had then an output going specifically to you. Uh -huh. And we had to have that because the only way I could add the, um, oh, I'm sorry, there's one more output or one more input on the mixer. It was Zoom's input that we had to say so that she could hear anybody talk from right. Zoom had to go into that mixer too. So now we have that going so that it the Zoom- It makes me so stressed out. It's not that, it is it is complicated, but it's not that complicated uh -huh. of a thing. You have three inputs. I'm just having flashbacks. Yeah, you have three <laughs> inputs, two of which have to go to the computer, go back to the computer, uh -huh. three of which have to go to you. Right. Right, that's really all it is. There's mm -hmm. three inputs. One of the outputs has to get two of them. The other output gets all of them. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward, right? But unfortunately, you can't do that in the computer. And that pissed me off so much because there was no actual way to yeah. do that in a computer. We had to buy external stuff to make it happen. And then ha and not having another computer made it really difficult because there's no way for you to see the confirmed thumbs up that it's working. Mm -hmm. You just have to trust yeah. that it's working. So like for a period of time... Taylor would come into the class like I would invite him into the class he would make sure everything was working I would test everything but still like one time I couldn't middle middle of the class actually not one time this happened a few times and I I didn't edit that video I should have made a video out of it but like my audio somehow skipped and so like they it was like skipping for them and they kept hearing this like one part of the song and me talking. And they were like, wait, 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 wait. That's <laughs> probably happening. That was probably a Zoom thing. Yeah. It was like every, um, there were problems all the time. But like overall, I, there's no way we could have done what we did. Like if he didn't have that knowledge and the, 
patience to figure it out because it was really complex. And like, that's when the whole thing of like, everyone needs a tailor because (laughs) there would be a problem. And I'm like, Taylor, like, I didn't know what to do. And so everyone in the class was like, Taylor, (laughs) come help us. Um, But it was like really amazing. And whenever anyone thinks that like content creators or like people who run seminars and like have these complex things that they're like, that stuff is easy. It's not easy. There's a lot now that you can do that is pretty easy, like built into the computer, built into software. But once you're like trying to play music and be able to hear other people and be able to hear yourself and play and pause things and show video, like yeah, it was it gets, a lot. It gets pretty complicated. Honestly, it's it's infinitely less complicated if you don't need to be giving computer audio also to Zoom. Yeah. Or sharing computer audio because it's not there's not like a barrier uh-huh. to that, but it's still it's one of those things that like if there's latency, it doesn't work. Yeah. Because Imagine trying to talk, but hearing your voice just a little bit after it came out of your mouth. Uh-huh. And then you try to, you try to uh, like accommodate for it, but then you end up waiting for you to stop hearing the delayed voice. So then now there's weird pauses. It is so trippy, especially when you're counting choreography. <laughs> you're better off not hearing anything. Yeah. You're better off just going just Yeah. Blind. Autopilot. Yeah. And like whatever. Just hoping it works. But um, then in our later phases of it I was playing video and I was watching people so it was like I was teaching the class live but I wasn't fully teaching the class live I would then pause the video come in and all of that so then that was an added thing of like we need to be able to play the video and hear the video audio I need to be able to mute myself so that they're not hearing me live then unmute myself pause the video when I want to be heard live it was a full production like it was insane yeah and the way to make it the most, I guess cost effective is the right way to say that, but the most time and cost effective was for you to only be the one doing it. Typically in something yeah. like that, you have a, a producer, you have yeah. a live switcher, whatever you want to call it. You have someone doing it for you so that you're not also thinking of the 40 things happening. <laughs> but then the part that would was like kind of impossible was me being in the same room and I couldn't be on the zoom feed because again, there's a delay. There's like a a two second delay between what I'm seeing and what you're doing. So any switch would be awkwardly late Yeah, if I wasn't live in the room and we don't, we didn't have like a way for me to also be in this room because the room's small. But also I was doing things on the fly. Like I didn't have a script of like, at this point, I'm going to come in. It was like, I would see something happen, want to pause it and come in. So it right. was just so you easier need to, for yeah. me to do it, yeah. even though it was complicated. Yeah. You'd have to push. Easier. We had it. So she, it was the easiest way to do it, but you had to push a few buttons to then, which would then pause the video and switch your camera and unmute you. Yeah. And it had to do it all in that order which was yeah. just annoying, but it works. But insane to think about now. Like, cause even now in the lessons that I teach online, it, it's not nearly as complicated, but when I need well, to can, like play music and stuff, I have to do a few of those steps. Yeah. You have to go back partially to the older way, but the, yeah, yeah like it, the biggest solution that a lot of people would probably be thinking is like, well, why don't you just use AirPods? I did that for yeah. a little while. Well, but hold on. You can't use AirPods. Right to route all of those things in the way that we routed them. Like yeah. you can, you don't get the customization. It's it's either all or nothing. So for the AirPods, it would be everything, which means that everybody in the Zoom class also gets to hear their own voice sent back to them, Right. which is miserable because now there's like that weird feedback, which you normally would hear when something's wrong with someone's Zoom and you go, oh, they're a rookie, you yeah. know? So like- That was a lot when people would unmute themselves and ask a question. I would be like on their TV. Right. Or somewhere else. They're talking. Yeah. And you can hear both. Yeah. Yeah. Like they had multiple screens of me. And I would like hear them say whatever back and then me say whatever back. Yeah. Um, So I was used to that. But that would be horrible if they were hearing that. Yeah. It would, it, it's also just like so much audio stuff is really distracting to me when it's mediocre. Yeah. 
like it's really distracting to me. And most, I know a lot of people don't hear it or don't notice, but the biggest- you subconsciously do, I feel. I think, I think what it really comes down to is you don't know how to articulate what you're hearing mm-hmm. as incorrect or as distracting or something. But because I know what is actually distracting, then it like, it just bothers me the whole time. Yeah. You know? I get that. So it's like, yeah, it's it's hard to like explain. I mean, it's like the biggest thing that I thought was cool about the audio stuff is when we were at Garrett's, um, oh my gosh, the uh, the release party. The, his the premiere. premiere. Yeah. I, it was so hard for me to come up with the word release. <laughs> um, but when we were at his premiere and, and a bunch of like his peers, I guess our peers, his peers yeah. more, feels more correct, but were listening to it and watching it and everyone was like stunned by the audio and i'm like yeah i did a good job on the audio i spent a lot of time on that audio and i like made it the best i could with what i had with what we were doing and i like and i do think it sounds good i think if i had even more time and even more places to test it i could have done like an exponentially better job than i did i'll one up you if you were there and did the audio in person. Oh, if I had done the record, if I had then been I, the audio yeah. recorder there, oh, it would be a completely different game. Like if people think that what <laughs> what it was is great, yeah. now if you had hired me to be that guy on site, yeah. it would be next to none. It would be it would feel unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but like people loved it or love it. Like think the yeah. audio is insane. And I'm like, it's because it is good, but it's also because I just, I know how to, I know what, you know what you're doing, what I'm doing, but I don't remember where I was going with that, it's, but it's, it's just, just yeah. such a, a weird thing because it's like, I, I don't, I'm so used to it. Cause like I live with him. I work with him. <laughs> it's like, I know what good audio can be and I know how good you are at it. But it is one of those things that it's not an appreciated thing because it is so behind the scenes. I think it's it, it or at least what I've noticed over the years is it's such an intangible thing. Mm-hmm. And people, it's so subconscious for everyone. Like, well, like I said, I don't understand it. Well, I try. Well, let's put it this way. The biggest way we communicate is through our ears. Yeah. And then the second biggest way is through receiving like how we're moving. Yeah. Like through our eyes. Yeah. You know, and then our mouths are the last part of it. Yeah. Right. So it's like demeanor, posture, understanding all of that. Also hearing everything. Right. And so it's like, it's super taken for granted or just even if it's not taken for granted, it's a subconscious thing that people don't think about ever. Yeah. But then when you work with audio it does go underappreciated until you like show what it was and then be like, this is what you could have gotten, but this is what you got. And then people are like, what? <laughs> That's insane. Right. But, but at the same time, like that to me feels so like, it feels like kitschy. Well, like think about me choreographing something and then you writing a song. It's like people, I feel like people can grasp choreography a bit more than writing a song. Like I, I kind of know where to start when writing a song, but I feel like the general public that's never even crossed their mind. Like, how do I even write a song? How do I create a song? What do I need to start with? Do I start with drums? Do I bring in guitar? Like what, what do I do? There's not even a thing, but I feel like choreography and like a visual people can kind of grasp where you would start, how you would do it. Yeah, but I think that goes with the intangible side of it where yeah. it's like the audio being such a part. Well, because like I think dance is not intrinsically part of everyone's life. Right. But you, everyone moves mm-hmm. or most everybody. I mean, everybody moves to yeah. some degree. Everyone moves. So like even if you don't dance or you're super against dancing, you at least understand what moving your body is and you can see someone do something and maybe you're like, can I even move that way? Yeah. And you like kind of try, but when you're like listening to something, you don't ever go, can I hear that that way? 
Because it's like you already heard it. It's already done. Like, right. Or you don't go like, can I see it that way? Yeah. But like when someone takes a photo and you're like, wow, that photo is great. You know, like yeah. that sparks it differently may- maybe than like audio would. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. It's very strange to think about. It's a, but yeah. you are very good at it. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I just like that all because we had talked about audio like earlier and then yeah when I was teaching that lesson and she's like you're very good at this I was like thank you I'm glad that you realize this it's like that's what I feel like you that's what I feel like you feel like when people are like wow that audio was really good it's like yeah it should be really good I'm glad you noticed (laughs) I don't usually come at it from that like (laughs) cocky duh but deep down, I feel like you should. I mean, maybe, but I... Because, like, if I didn't believe that I was good at teaching, I wouldn't be selling my ability to teach like I do. Yeah, I guess Like, you got to be kind of cocky about it. you got to know I mean, I'm, that you're good. Unless you're not good, then you should know you're not good. Yeah, that's fair. But I know I know <laughs> that I'm good, so yeah. I don't not sell it, but... You don't sell it, and I don't. you probably should, but <laughs> you don't. It's... <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know. I care about it a lot, and it's really hard to, like, get people to understand that it's worth the money to do it right. Yeah. But then the people that do understand that, that are willing to pay for it, don't always have the opportunity or the time or whatever to, like, do it. So they're just like, ah, I can't. Yeah. You know? And, like, I don't know. It's it's one of those where it's like, it's hard. There, I mean, there's a reason that I do, well photography and videography are so much more tangible and that's why that is more a more prevalent job i think Mm -hmm. because people get it yes i well i don't under i can't understand it because it it makes sense to me and i can hear it and i understand that connection but like audio is a lot easier than photography for you no it's not in general if no you, chance. Okay, hold on. If you know the very few technical things you need to know about a human voice or about a, uh, I don't know, let's say like like a song that's supposed to be in the background. If you know two rules for each one, three rules for each one, your audio will kind of sound nearly the same as me doing it. Mm-mm. I mean, no, I can tell you from experience. It's not. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess, I guess you're right because I can, I, hold I can on. be hired to take a photo. I cannot be hired to do your sound. I could make a whole movie. I could film a whole movie. Yeah, that's fair. It is pretty much point a camera in a direction, and it'll do it for you. And audio has not been been stupided that much but (laughs) it's that's exactly (laughs) but it's yeah i guess i don't know i feel like i mean we go out into public sometimes and i see the way people take photos and i'm like Uh, good lord this is why it's horrible and this is why you pay someone to take photos i'm like your angle of you walking and you took it like this while you're walking by i'm like you could have just left it at face level straight and it would have been a better photo than you're like, here's an angle above while I'm moving. But you ever notice that people must just know they get a vibe, they get a feeling because if we're out in public and we're like with a group of friends, they will, if Garrett's there, they will ask Garrett to take the photo. If you're there, they will ask you to take the photo. See, here's where this is really funny. And then you funny. pass it off to me. Like no, 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 I don't no, no, know no, what no. I'm doing. No, no, no. Here, here's actually where it's really funny is if you, me, and Garrett are there. Yeah. Garrett gets asked. Yeah. If you and I are there, you actually get asked. I do not get asked. I'm more approachable. Yeah. I apparently have a big giant F off stamped on my forehead <laughs> when it comes to people asking me to take photos for them. But the absolutely hilarious part to me is I have a fancy camera on me 90% of the time. Like, or yeah. a camera, it, whatever. It doesn't even need to be fancy. I literally have a camera on me. Yeah. And for some reason, people don't think I'm the photographer. They think you're the photographer. Or 
if that's not the case, they think I'm too good and they need yeah, someone worse. Yeah, that's what I think it is. But <laughs> So they won't ask when me. When it's like a group, if it's not just me and you, they ask you. I'm Unless also, Garrett's there, they ask Garrett. I'm also very good at the avoidance of being the one that would be asked and I get out of the way because I'm not really that interested in it. Yeah. Most of the time you hand me the camera. This just brought back a flashback of us outside of the bungalow with our friends. Yes. Have we talked about that on here? Mm. We probably talked about it when it happened. There was some sort of fight. There's some sort of disagreement between a guy and I think the employees at this. The security staff. Yeah. It's not. What is the bungalow? I guess it's mm. like a bar restaurant. Pretty sure. Anyway, uh, it's a nice place at the beach. And there was this guy and he the security was trying to like pin him down and all of our friends like we were leaving this restaurant that's across the little hallway and all of us just like stopped to watch and when I looked back Taylor, <laughs> Taylor and all of our like bigger like guys that could protect all of us were in the back and all of uh, like the shorter People, smaller people, although I would trust Drake and Bobby to defend me if they needed to. We were all in the front, like, what's going on? <laughs> and then I was like, I should probably not be right in the front here. This is getting a little out of hand. And I like backed away. But like all of you that would defend us were all in the back. Well, let me let me clarify here. Uh if anyone has ever been curious about fight or flight. I will fly so <laughs> fast, so far, I do not even bother. <laughs> Me, Drake, and Bobby were like, what's going on? <laughs> there is an instinctual thing with me where I go, there is danger. Let me quantify this. It seems irrational, irrational and uncontrollable. I am going to remove myself just far enough where I wouldn't be a target. That's where I go. Yeah. That was yep. smart. That's where I go. Yeah. I do not go, hmm, let me be an innocent bystander that gets punched or kicked or something because I'm too close. Nope, absolutely not. Well, if I was in line for the bungalow, I'd be like, we're about, not going here today. About, I'd be like, I don't care. Yeah. I Once the security guard like almost pulled his gun, I was like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> That's I don't when think I went they had the a gun. I think he had a taser. If Whatever anything. it was. Looked like or a gun. What's a, is that what a, a taser? Is that the one where I'm goes, pretty sure it was a gun. I'm pretty I'm, sure he was an armed security. I'm nearly positive he wouldn't. Nicole, do you understand what pulling a gun means? The other person needs to have had a gun and have a reason to have well, the I thing I thought pulled. that's what the problem was. The problem was the guy couldn't get his car keys because he was too drunk. Oh. That's what the problem was. The problem was he went, hey, I need my car keys. And the rule at the bungalow that you sign is we take your car keys. If you're not able to drive, you don't get them back. Which is genius. It's great, except this liability issue. And then also, this guy, if you have a Tesla, it's your you give phone. Them a, no, you give them the card or whatever. I don't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Clearly, he didn't have a Tesla. <laughs> so, but he caused a stink and got all mad at the hostess who does not have the keys in front of her and does not give them back. Yeah. Now he has a problem because he wants to go home, yeah. but he can't drive home, and then he won't leave, and now he wants to fight because he's drunk. Yeah. Now you have the problem that you're curious about. Yeah. Right. Which I was very Great. curious. Great. Now, where does a gun get involved? It doesn't. Okay, whatever he had. That also, he was there was not really a person that was doing anything that was like going to do that. There was just four security guards that had it to was, pin the guy down. It was a lot. He was like a gangly white dude. Yeah, I didn't understand why it was taking everyone. I mean, I guess I kind of get it. Like when you have multiple guys, like it seems like four people would be able to pin one person down easily. But then I get it when they're just flaily and he like nobody flaily. wants to get hurt and nobody wants to hurt anybody. So you kind of have each of you have to hold a limb. Yeah. And then when a limb gets free because you're all trying to not hurt anybody, <laughs> it it's kind a, of like a weird. Yeah. But you did you did good at staying away. Oh, absolutely. I was behind Dylan. Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's no chance I'm in front of that. Oh, I'm I am, right. Dylan was in between Dylan us. Six, Dylan was behind me. Yeah, Dylan's six three. I'm I'm peeking out behind Dylan's shoulder. Or not even shoulder. I'm not even that tall. Behind Dylan's <laughs> bicep. Arm. Yeah. Hey. 
<laughs> What's going on over there? All right. Well, if anything so happens, funny. you get the brunt of it, right, dude? Okay. See ya. I looked in the back and it was you, Garrett, and Holland, I think. We're just together in the very back. Yeah, like we're not interested door. in that. Are you kidding me? No. The last thing Mark. I want is any part of that. Yeah, I didn't either. But I, yeah. Because like what good I removed is that, myself. Yeah, what good is that going to do anybody to yeah. get involved? Anyway, you're very good at audio in case you. Thanks, sure. man. I appreciate it. More people need to know that. Okay. I hope they do now. <laughs> they should. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming to a whole episode on How good audio. Taylor is. <laughs> God. <laughs> I think that's really interesting, though, how we used to run the classes, because I forgot about all that. It was just so, like, natural and well, what, what we had to do. natural about it? Was it was just what we had to do, to do what we wanted to do. So it I was, guess. like, not a huge deal. But then now that I think about it, I'm like, no one knew what we were doing. No one knew what was actually happening. Yeah, I guess that's true. We didn't do, like, a behind-the-scenes Probably should have. That would have been cool. I mean, it's not too late, I guess. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could still do it. It would still make sense. But like, also, it's like, here is the computer. Look at me move software around. Okay. Yeah. I plugged three things in behind the scenes. Yay. I mean, I could lift this thing up and then it's like behind the scenes, done, yeah. set it back down. This does not require as much, nearly as much. It did the first like three episodes that we never used because yeah. I needed to fiddle with this and figure it out. Yeah. Outside of that, it didn't need, it doesn't need much because you, we don't use it for anything else. If yeah. we used it for other stuff, this would be the end of this. <laughs> well, it'd be really complicated because I don't think it has like scenes or anything. Yeah. Don't mess up our recording. I don't think I did. I just tapped the screen and it changed. Which so input. scary. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to fiddle with that. That's anyway. not worth fiddling with. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for being here. Thanks for coming to my Taylor talk. <laughs> Can't blame me for this. She started it. I did. I find it so fascinating. Sorry, I That's think fair. you're talented. Gosh. Oh, thanks for thinking I'm talented. Gosh. <laughs> if you'd like episodes early and exclusives, please get a membership at glitterandcatlitter.com or on YouTube. And we'll see you on the next one. Glitter and Cat Litter.